While it was the first mainframe game to spread beyond the control of its creators, Space War was by no means the last. Like Space War, the other games of the 60s and early 70s were all written at the few large institutions that could afford the machines, and coded in the machine language for that specific make and model. Sadly, system administrators would purge their systems of unauthorized programs on a regular basis to preserve resources for the institution's legitimate business, so it's impossible to know how many early games have been lost forever, but a decent enough handful were remembered well enough to be recreated and ported to higher-level machines and more modern languages. It's important to remember, as we go on, that most of these mainframes didn't have the CRT screens of MIT's PDP-1, so, long after Space War, most of these games were instead played with peripherals like the teleprinter, a device developed in the 19th century for use with telegraph that had been adapted as a mainframe computer's output device. Users would type in commands and receive printed responses on the same paper. 1964's The Sumerian Game was, if anything, even more of a pioneer in the industry than Space War before it. It's generally recognized as the first economic sim, the prototypical city-building game, the first edutainment title, the first game with a narrative, and the first game designed and written by a woman. Initially designed as part of a study into the use of computer-based simulations as teaching aids in schools, it was written and designed by fourth grade teacher Mabel Addis and coded by IBM programmer William McKay in the Fortran language on an IBM 7090, a vacuum tube machine then worth almost $3 million. Inspired by the game Monopoly, Addis wanted to create a game that could teach children economic theory while avoiding the current overuse of Greek civilization as a historical framing. She instead went back to the city-states of ancient Sumer to put players in the role of the king of Lagash over three successive and more economically complex reigns. In each of the game's rounds, players would be appraised of the city-state's population, farmland, and grain and would be asked how much grain would be distributed as food, planted, or stored. Subsequent rounds would report on the result of these choices, as well as random events like technological innovations, droughts, or grain spoilage. In the second and third sections of the games, complications were added, like deciding how much population to allocate to farming or manufacturing. An expanded version of the game in 1966 added an advisor character who would interpret the events of the game for the player, along with taped audio segments and slideshow presentations. The first video game cutscenes. As this was an educational study, gameplay audiences were extremely limited. Each version of the Sumerian game was played by 30 students in a single session. If that were the end of it, then the game would be no more notable in the history of game development than other single institution projects and tech demos of decades past. However, in 1968, DEC employee Doug Diamond had the game explained to him by a woman who'd seen it and decided to recreate the game in the newly developed Focal language on one of DEC's PDP-8 minicomputers. While nowhere near as large as the 1070 or even the PDP-1, the 8 still cost nearly $20,000 in mid-60s money and weighed 250 pounds, still not yet anywhere near a consumer product. Titled King of Sumeria and only replicating the first grain-focused phase of the Sumerian game, Diamond rewrote his version to focus on the far more well-known Sumerian king Hammurabi, Diamond's game was very well known in the programming community during the early 70s, with versions of it being a popular first project for hobbyists trying to pick up the skill. A third evolution of the game came in David H. All's adaptation of the game into BASIC, a language capable of running not just on mainframes and mini computers, but personal computers as well, and featured in his 1973 book, Basic Computer Games. 1968 saw the development of the text-based simulation game Civil War. The game recreates 14 battles of the war, with the player taking on the role of the South, set against the computer's North. What control the player has over the outcome of each battle is limited to how much to spend on food, pay for officers, ammunition, and which offensive or defensive strategy to employ. As with the Sumerian game, Civil War is most known through all its basic computer games, and is credited within to L. Cram, L. Goody, and D. Hibbard, three students in Lexington High School, Massachusetts. All's version adds a two-player option, which was carried over to Creative Computer's 1975 port for the Commodore PET. Lunar was another PDP-8 program written in Focal, this one in 1969 by high school student Jim Storer, and soon ported to BASIC, three versions of which were included in All's book. In 
This game, obviously enough, created the lunar lander genre in which the player controlled a primitive craft's thrust and vector while trying to land on the moon. While later arcade and graphical versions were released, the earliest programs are textual and turn-based. In Storer's original, the player only decides how much vertical thrust to apply during each 10-second turn, based on current velocity and fuel stores. In 1971, high school senior Mike Mayfield was teaching himself how to program at a computer lab at the University of California. There, he encountered Space War on the lab's PDP-10 computer. Having gained access to the lab's more powerful 32-bit STS-7 mainframe, Mayfield set out to create a version of Space War for it. The difficulty here was that the STS-7 at the lab, while more powerful, lacked a vector monitor. Instead, it housed a teleprinter for input and output. After brainstorming with some friends, Mayfield came up with the idea of a game based on Star Trek that would print up a map of the galaxy and local star systems. The player controls the USS Enterprise as they fly through the galaxy, seeking to eliminate as many Klingons as possible within the game's time limit. Every object in the game, stars, star bases, the player ship, Klingons, are represented by ASCII text characters in a grid printed out each turn. The game grew very popular and was ported to different systems and enhanced by programmers throughout the 70s, most notably Bob Leadham's version for the Data General Nova 800 minicomputer, which saw an overhauled user interface and expanded gameplay options coming to be known as Super Star Trek. Development continued well into the era of the video game industry, including commercial variants like Apple Trek for the Apple II, Atari's Stellar Trek for the 2600, and Trek 80 for the TRS-80. Our final subject is one of the more prolific creators of early mainframe games, English major Don Daglow. In 1971, he found a PDP-10 minicomputer set up at the dorm in Pomona College in Claremont, California. Seeing game development as another form of writing, he would work in the industry into the 1990s, creating such classics as Gateway to the Savage Frontier and Neverwinter Nights, the first graphical massively multiplayer online game. His first title, though, was 1971's Baseball, the first interactive baseball game in which players could manage the team mid-game. The game was text-based, and players could make decisions as to the batter or pitcher, to walk, steal, or bunt, and so forth. Daglow would continue development of the game all the way into the 80s, culminating with 1983's Intellivision World Series Baseball. In addition to a variation of Mayfield's Star Trek, Daglo also wrote an unlicensed computer adaptation of Dungeons & Dragons called Dungeon, Line of Sight Displays, and Auto Mapping. 